Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and happy Sunday. Um, this is gonna be a really different video than what I normally do. Uh, anybody who knows me when I started this platform, it was for basically for the financial challenge. Um, and it was also to do some funny storytelling as I have so many funny and interesting events in my life. But rarely do I, t uh, you know, touch on very important topics because, you know, sometimes they can be sensitive for other people. Uh, but this is what we do. This is what this channel was built for. This channel was built to to um, to talk about very serious topics, to talk about things that you typically wouldn't talk about with your friends or family. Uh, this is the open forum for that. This is one of the reasons why I did that. So in order in order to stay true to it, um, I'm going to go there today. I'm going to talk about, you know, the financial approach as an African-American man. Um, again, as I go into this topic, please don't take offense to it. Uh, people who know, know that I love everybody that's around me. I have different variety of races and cultures and, and, and that, that's not what this is about. This is about just talking about a topic that is very sensitive to me. Okay. So being, you know, in a circle of, of different nationalities and different cultures and different races, it's great. I love that. You know, I love, you know, that I'm in an interracial in um, relationship soon to be married. Um, I love that about my life, uh, but I am an African-American man and I also know where I stand uh, when it comes to big decisions in my life, whether it was education or careers or uh, financial wellness. And I knew that I had to take a different approach to those things. Um, and one of the challenges that I, I see is that um, and I've said this before, money is not discussed at the African-American dinner table unless it's a bill. You know, how to be off well off financially is not discussed. I've spoken to very uh, a bunch of people, my peers, people I know uh, about this, and they all agreed. We didn't learn about this growing up. You look at basketball players and football players and all of these different people who made millions of dollars. When you hear the stories of people going broke, what nationality is going broke? It's us. Uh, when you see people losing houses and losing cars, who are the people that are losing these things is us. Um, and you start to wonder, what's the common denominator? Why is this happening? Where's the, the, the weak link in the chain? Well, you can't always go back to we weren't taught this because a lot of us are in our 40s and we, we've learned this by now. So now you have to say, OK, what is what is the inconsistency here that's causing this now? Well, a lot of it, I think, is, and I can only speak from an American, an African American male perspective. Number one, I think, in general, we're too flashy. Not, I'm not a flashy person, but in general, um, I and I know this from people that I know. They have to have the nicest car. They have to have the nicest Jordans. They have to have the nicest sneakers. They have to have the gold, the glamour, uh, for whatever to show a certain status. And they will have these things, but behind it, an empty account. And to me, that's just not worth it. That's just not smart. And one of the things I've learned along the way, especially over the last 20 years, is where I am on the food chain. Um, I know that if I go to buy a car, I have to go back to the basics and pull all three credit reports and clean up everything off of the credit reports before I walk into that dealership, because that's the part of that deal that I can control. By controlling that, I know that it gives me a better shot at getting a deal. It doesn't promise me anything, but I know that I can eliminate things that they would pick out on me. You know what I'm saying? If I had something there, I take the same approach with uh, home ownership, uh, you know, trying, uh, I'm not going to say trying, but setting myself up for a home ownership in a town that I love uh, in Easton and, and something that I really thought serious, serious about uh, before the purchase and really put a lot of focus in, into it. And I said to myself, okay, this is what I want. But I can't just go in there because I could, yeah, I could go in there and I can get approved. It's easy. You can go take money off your 401k and get a house, but I want to keep the house. And that was very important to me because the people around me have lost homes and I didn't want that to be me. So I said, okay, I'm going to put myself on a time scale because I know that in order to protect my interests, in order to protect my money, in order to protect my investment, I have to go back to all three credit reports. I have to go back in stacks of old paper to make sure that no bills are there. Not one debt is there. Pulling my credit two and three times to make sure nothing pops up. Making sure I have more than what the down payment is. I'm giving myself 23 months to do this because when I go to approach the deal at the table with the bank, I know that I'm going to be looked at differently. I know that going in. And the only thing you can control is what you can control. 
Is this a good thing? No, it's a very bad thing. It's very unfair. But this is the life that we live. And by knowing this, you have to take actions as such. So as black men, sometimes we have to look at what are we doing with our money? How are we saving our money? You know, I know a couple personally that, um, and I'm not going to use any names for privacy purposes, that lived in an apartment and they got in trouble and couldn't afford the apartment. They, they moved home to his mom's house, saved for a year. I mean, put away a lot of money because you can do that when you're living at home. Went out, put the down payment down, got a house. Two years later, lost the house, okay? I know another person, never left home, bought a house, lost a house. I know another couple had a house, bought another house and lost a house. Lost both homes. And I look at this and I say, so wh what's going on? What's going wrong? Um, well, you have to understand that there aren't a lot of African-American homeowners. There just aren't. Yeah, there's some. My mother's one. You know, um, th there's a lot of people who uh, have been, been in the military and, and get the VA loan. And there's people who have been blessed enough to get it very young. But a majority, a very large number of people have not attained home ownership. And so instead of focusing on what can I do to change that, they buy the expensive car. They buy the nice, you know, they rent the nice condo and they give up. For what? You know what I'm saying? And, and that has always bothered me. That's never sat well with me. How do we change that way of thinking? Well, number one, it goes back to what I'm saying is, is where you sit on the scale. You know, you have to understand that you have to position yourself stronger than the person beside you. you. You know, the person beside you may not have to go inside of a car dealership with a perfect credit score that's in the eights, but you may have to because you understand that you're gonna be looked at differently. You may have to go to the table for home ownership fighting for the fixed rate because they may throw you with an adjustable rate knowing that that's gonna jack up over the next two years and you're gonna lose your home because of that. So knowing that you have to educate yourself about everything. And I use me as the prime example. You know, on this path to buying a home in this particular area that I wanna move into, um, it, it's, it's, it's not a challenge to do it, but it would be, it would be uh, behoove of me to go through it being ignorant and not you know, paying attention and being naive about what's around me when I go. So knowing that I want this particular, you know, neighborhood, knowing that I want a house in this area, knowing what the house costs, knowing what the market is, there's no guarantee I'm going to be treated fairly, but there's a guarantee I'm going to go in with everything on my side uh, so that when I go to approach the table, I'm going to fight and fight for the best deal possible financially for, for, for us. Um, that's very important to me. Um, because I look around and I see people that don't. I know people personally who have gone to dinner, you know, with friends and family and can't pay their bills afterwards. I've seen people go on vacation who can't pay their bills when they come off vacation. Why is this? You know, because it's, it's about the show. It's about trying to put things out there that's not realistic. You hear people that will say, oh, I'm going to own a business. I'm going to flip houses because they see it on TV and they think it's very easy. But they don't look at the long run of how much money you have to put down to buy the house, how much money you have to already have set aside to fix the house and how much time you have to turn a profit before it starts going to the negative for you. No, they just want to do a business. They want to own a business and they're not looking at the long-term effects it can have on you if that business fails. You, I know people that don't want to work and want to own a business, which isn't smart because they don't want, they, they're afraid to, to do it the hard way, to get their, their elbows dirty and, and to pull up their sleeves and just work hard. Not to say you can't approach your dreams of having a business, but have something to fall back on while you're trying to achieve that dream. So I think a lot of it is, is, is looking in the mirror and saying, okay, I know what I'm up against as an African-American. How can I approach this differently? What can I do that's differently? Uh, that's different than my previous approach. Um, that was something I really looked at this year because I knew my life was changing. I knew that I was going from a single guy who could have probably just got a small one bedroom condo with a dog and a couple of Frisbees and traveled the world, which wouldn't have cost me a lot. And God has blessed me with an amazing woman. And I said, look, every step I take, especially financially, not only affects me, it affects her. And I had to think about that big picture. But I also know I'm African-American within that big picture. So I have to approach everything, whether it's building savings for retirement differently. 
um, I had to approach the way I manage money differently. Um, and we're going to dig more into this topic in the next video. Stay tuned.